So this is music production. We're going to be doing some uplifting breakbeat. I started it uh, before last week's stream, but I'll be continuing it today. Uh, let's see, drop down menus, do they show up? It seems like they do. That's a big plus. And there we go. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you don't know me, I'm Zircon, <clears throat> Andrew Versa. I make music. I do virtual instruments and all that sort of stuff. I've been out of the game a little bit in terms of making electronic music for fun, but uh, now that I have a little bit more free time, getting back into it, so I'm very excited about that. And this track is potentially going to be the start of a new album that I'm very excited about. So that's cool. HC HCP 2004, what's up? Thank you for joining me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play what I have so far. We'll check that out and see how it sounds. Everybody that's just coming in, uh, Phil Bats Ploy, what's up? Zoo Boy Sean, Zepro, and Beard Bardish. It's a great name, by the way, Bearded Bardish. I like it. Uh, yeah, so to address a couple things, yeah, I do want to make another album. It's been too long, so I really want to, I want to get started with that. Uh, so since my last one, I did a couple tracks like Ice Lock and Neptune, which are cool. I think those might just be standalone tracks. I'm not sure those would be part of this album, um, but I do want to do more. I want to kind of go back, do some breakbeat stuff, trance, um, kind of a mix of things. And then um, Jill being on this track, uh, I think that would be great. I think this could really do well with vocals. But um, obviously for writing purposes, I'm going to keep kind of writing and working on the track like this. And then the vocals will come later once, because things might change, the arrangement might change, the melody could change. So that's why I'm doing uh, this stuff first. So <clears throat> one thing I wanted to do was uh, this section, this kind of cool breakdown earlier on. Um, I want to lead into it a little bit more. So I was just going to do a, a little reverse symbol here and pick it up. <laughs> And the other thing is, so some of this is a little messy. Um, the, the volume gating that's happening, uh, it sounds a bit jarring because I'm just muting some of the effects here. So, for example, check this out. That sounds okay, but then if I add these in, I'm getting the remnants of the first chord. Since I'm just muting it, 
when I unmute it, I'm getting like the delay and stuff from before, which I actually don't want. So um, I have to deal with that at some point. I'm not going to deal with it now. Probably the, the way to get around that would be to render out those individual parts and then just manually um, automate the volume. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll deal with that later. Uh, what I wanted to do is add some kind of nice arpeggio sounds in between those those gaps or in those gaps. So starting with here's here's what I mean. You'll see what I mean here in a second. We're gonna do some cool kind of upwards and downwards arpeggios. We'll do them on these are gonna be triplet sixteenths. So the sound is subject to change here. But uh, that's the idea. So I'm thinking actually not with the delay for this part of the track. So uh, take off, take off the delay and we'll automate it back up later. So that's yeah. So that's the idea of this, and now to, to kind of build it up and and do uh, a little bit more with it, some more tricks, some more writing. So I'm kind of just following the chord right now. I'm gonna play with a few different ways of of doing this. Again, here playing with different rhythms to see, uh, just kind of get the general sound that I'm going for. Yeah, okay, so this is like. 80% there. Um, uh, welcome, if you are just joining me. Uh, it, will this be uploaded on YouTube? This was asked. Uh, yes, I also have to upload the first stream that I did, or the first return stream that I did. So I will do that, just need the time. So I apologize, I am, uh, I am recording it, so that's good, right? Okay. Okay, so this, I might change that a little bit more, but I wanted to just get those general kind of shapes in for the sound. Okay, and this just being silence is not exactly what I had in mind either. So this might have like a, I'm thinking an arpeggio that sort of echoes out. And then 
obviously this is going to uh, go down in volume. And create an automation clip. It's not going to stay like that. Something like this, maybe. And I'm thinking also a second hit on the third beat. <laughs> Change that curve a little bit. Um, okay, so Combi Fox. I know that FL Studio is different than Cubase Logic, etc., but why is there a wave file or several in the middle of the MIDI arrangement? Um, no, really, no reason. Um, you, in theory, if you care more about organization than I do, uh, you would maybe label and organize these a little bit better, but because this is pretty much totally freeform, I mean, in theory, you could have everything on just one track which would not be great, but you could do that. It doesn't prevent you from doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess ideally I would have MIDI on, on, at the top and then audio on the bottom maybe, but, eh, you know. Yes, Cyber Halo, I am streaming again. I'm very happy to. Thank you for coming. In fact, like... Maybe more like that. Yeah, I can't like that. So like, clap, something else, like another sample of some kind. Um, I have a ton of samples, as you'll see here in, in a moment. Um, if you have not seen my, my sample collection, it's actually really bad. I, I really shouldn't have this many samples. It's uh, that's kind of cool. What I'm really looking for is almost like a light, like a plink or a ting kind of a thing for that one spot. Um, and I think I know where to find it. it would be on. I, I have several kind of vinyl tape collections by Gold Baby. Um, they do really good work, like Urban Cookbook. This is really cool stuff. Uh, but the question is, there's so many. So we'll see. I might just put a placeholder in for now. Yeah, uh, okay. Let me just find something in the, in the ballpark. It's almost like a glass sound, I think, could, could be cool there to sort of break it up. Um, okay, it's close enough. Um, that's really not good. Okay, something like, I mean, this is, this is not really what I had in mind there, but um, it, it'll do. that out a little bit and we'll call this um, how about plink. so again not not really the right sound but um, it, it serves the purpose of at least holding the place for something better and when I want to spend half an hour digging for it I'll, I'll do it. But I will pitch it up because it doesn't sound good right now. Wait a second, what was that? It should be more like that. It's weird that it does not seem to be going up in pitch that much. Oh, right, and then there was this sample, which I feel like using as a, a quick transition could be kind of cool. Uh, so we'll call this transition. See, so yeah, I'm color coding. That's an improvement over my previous organization, or lack thereof. <laughs> So, one more time.
totally drop out the previous part here. So like. <laughs> entirely. Um, would I recommend Native Instruments Complete 10 or Omnisphere 2? Um, well, I guess everybody has their own, uh, their own views on this, but uh, I think Omnisphere is amazing. It's one of the best. Uh, it's not, I guess it is technically a sampler, but it's also a synth. It's amazing. The sound design is just incredible. But I think value for money complete is going to give you more than Omnisphere if you don't have either one because you're going to get contact, which by itself is just crucial. Um, and also massive, FM8. So I, I would lean towards complete 10 if you're going to spend your money on, on a big purchase like that. Uh, okay, yeah, so one thing I was thinking about for this um, section was whether I want to do more with the bass uh, and or change the, uh, the drums. So I was thinking about changing the snare. But again, maybe I, I don't think I'm going to worry about that right now. I don't want to get too much into the minutia of it and kind of just keep it moving forward. Um. So I, I, what I was doing here was kind of like a old bit, bit crush breakdown, and uh, I'll, I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. Da, 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 da. This is the second part. I'm going to uh, definitely some more stuff here with the production. Keep in mind, this is just kind of note sequencing right now. Um. Do some triplet stuff, maybe like. That's pretty cool, I think. Um, it kid. So I want to really kind of bring this up, make it nice and fat sounding. So I have satin on here for uh, some of the compression tape saturation style effects. Uh, Common Fox, remember one of my old remixes I used the big crusher on the beats. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, definitely I want to go for that sort of thing here. I think what could sound cool is like 
playing with the reverb a little bit here and also the uh, the triggering of the samples. But uh, for now, let's see what this sounds like in context. Oh, okay, so I can do that for a little bit of extra noise on the snares. So this is cool, it's in the right direction, right? Um, and uh, maybe do some, kind of want to bring in some more uh, version, like really uh, drive the sound more. And uh, what I was thinking was maybe having like a short reverb and then spiking it up for different parts. So take that, and then what I could do is, is kind of play with the, uh, the reverb itself. And just to give it sort of more interest. And again, this might be the kind of thing I work on more for the detail work, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of the kind of stuff that you can do with uh, some clever automation. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So we got the we got some interesting sequencing happening, uh, a little bit of effects automation. Uh, probably what I would what I would do next is some more uh, interesting uh, glitch effects too. So let me see if I have I stutter edit installed because that would be something I would use for this. Okay. So stutter edit is a plugin that works very well for adding all sorts of interesting glitchy motion to a part. And it's MIDI triggered, so if we take this, so it doesn't it doesn't do anything unless you're sending MIDI into it by default. So that is a little bit confusing compared to other plugins. Um, so for example, uh, it has the ability to stretch out certain samples that go through it, or it can uh, re-trigger very quickly. Um, do some interesting spatial effects. So I kind of want to play with that and, and just sort of see what that sounds like here. Right, so it does that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to do it halfway so we can still hear the rhythm. So you can hear those effects happening as I'm playing, right? Hopefully. Um, one of them sounded really cool. It was this one, I think. See if I, can, I have to see if I can find it. I'm hitting keys on my MIDI keyboard right now. That's cool. So that's kind of like a, a bit crush kind of sound. Um, even further, because the drums are already sort of bit crushed to begin with. Um, that's on a G. 
So I'm gonna take that. I need to play with the volume a little bit more on this too, but. is a reverse, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so, you know, adding a little bit more stuff like that, uh, I think is cool, um, but I probably need to also be boosting the volume while those, while those things happen. So I'm gonna create another channel here and increase the volume during, during the glitch effects, which is, somewhat necessary, because otherwise you can't really hear what's going on. And then, um, okay, so writing-wise, what I want to do here is, like, I'm going to start changing up the chords a little bit. Let's see, okay, I gotta copy this bass line. And So this is going to be like the subsequent, um, it might not be this bass, so again, these are one of these things that could change, uh, but I need to start writing the parts, and then we can tweak the instruments and that sort of thing after. Hey, Bardic, what's up? for this. Maybe the piano and then kind of cut it off. But let me get the chords down first, I can always change it. talking, but I had to get those things, those, uh, those chords down first. Ludwig, hey, what's up? Thanks for coming. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, all right. That's sounding pretty good. So imagine some sort of drum breakdown here underneath that. So I'm, this is, I, sh I probably don't need to keep saying this as a disclaimer, but this is not final.
but just for example. <laughs> thing. Let's see, I gotta find the right instrument from uh, our template here. I don't know what I actually have loaded though. All right, so this is one of the things. I'm gonna sequence it on here and then maybe change it up. Flashing out this arpeggio part. Okay, so again, maybe not this instrument, but um, the idea will be start with this breakdown kind of thing. Fill in some, maybe some extra hits, build on that more. And then maybe uh, come back down to a total break, sort of right after this part. So that's why I'm thinking arrangement-wise. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, this um, doing it on a on a piano is not really what I had in mind. It's a little, it's a little bit too dreamlike for this for this part. Did I ever join one hour songwriting challenges? Yeah, I, I did that all the time. Um, I probably did at least 30 or 40 of them. So I'm, I am used to writing and clicking fast. Let me see here for a second. How do I want to do this? Um... This is probably the right octave. And I don't think I want it to sustain so much, so I'm gonna try doing it like this and see how it sounds.
and probably I'm thinking repeat this once. And again, the, the drum variation is not at all there yet, so that's that's gonna I think that's gonna come later. So. <laughs> This, this is a good part. This is like a, I guess you call this a bridge. Um, so I'm, with that in mind, let me focus on the melody here, the bridge. Why is that not playing anything? It's a mystery to everybody, myself included. Aha! I muted everything. Soloed. But because I have my mic on my send track, it's working. Hooray. Okay, good. Cool, cool. Um, by the way, if anybody has any questions about what I'm doing, they want, if you want me to slow down a little bit, focus on a specific channel or instrument, or you want to just know, hey, what is that sound? Or how did you get it to sound like that? Let me know. I can stop, slow down, and uh, show anything you're interested in. Check it out. How's, how's this sound? Okay, uh, not perfect, but it gets the notes down at least. So then we can kind of tweak from there. Uh, why did everything mute all of a sudden? Um, yeah, because I soloed a specific track in the mixer. I soloed the stabs track, and as a result, everything else was muted. So see the piano over here is not coming through, so unmute. Fix that. CZFJ Rod, what's up? Thank you for joining me. Melody writing. There's no uh, no scientific solution for this. You just gotta to get a feel for it. Some notes could be uh, could be changed here. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Goldman three. Do I know how to play an instrument? Assuming the question is directed towards me, uh, actually, I do know how to play the piano. You wouldn't necessarily believe that, 
by the fact that I'm clicking a lot of stuff in, but that's partially because it's faster. I don't have to quantize things. The other explanation is because between the streaming and the fact that I'm using a lot of very high CPU plugins, uh, my latency is pretty high. So I'm at 12 milliseconds. So when I press the key, it's going to be at least 12 milliseconds. But then because I'm also buffering it further, you can see up here, the total latency is 33 milliseconds. When you're playing notes at 33 milliseconds, it doesn't sound good. It, it's uh, You lose the rhythm kind of easily. So it often ends up being faster in that situation to just click in the notes as opposed to uh, playing, you know. <laughs> not going to use the plucks here, I'm thinking. Well, uh, maybe using them, I'm going to call this sync synth, because that's what it is. This is main pluck. Now I can actually see what's going on. instrument or at least have the option of switching it. So that's the pattern 58. So if we did that, it would be more like... will be happening here is some really cool drum stuff as well. So, you know, that's I'm just copying and pasting right now, which is kind of lazy, but it is important because it gives me a sense of what the soundscape could be here in this part. Um, maybe put in, have like a crash, right? think I'll do is layer the melody here as well. I'll mute, uh, I'll, I'll mute the drums for now. There's a question, well, okay, so <laughs> Tommy Fox noted that 33 milliseconds of latency is still relatively low. Granted, yeah, it's not super high. I used to work way higher, but when it comes to playing in real time, you start to, you start to feel it. Um, if, I were, if I were just working on something by myself, I would pr probably put this down to like two milliseconds or three total, which really feels nice and responsive. <clears throat> and uh, Arxegis... I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, so I hope I am. You can tell me how to pronounce it. Question was, I create instruments for contact, right? Is it more like writing code 
or more like editing sounds? That's a good question. Um, it really is actually both. So, uh, for example, without getting on too much of a tangent, um, this is an instrument that I'm working on right now. It's a virtual shakuhachi, um, which is a Japanese wind instrument. <clears throat> so the script for it. This is all what happens when you load the instrument and when you play a note, for example, um, all this logic happens. So if I go to the note callback, there's all sorts of stuff, like depending on how many notes are being played, uh, how do we select an articulation, uh, do you play a breath sample or not, what do you display to the user, what velocity do you play at. So this is all code. Um, but then in order to actually have a playable instrument, you also have to have the samples set up in a certain way. Uh, they have to be cut just right, they have to be recorded properly, they have to be mixed properly. And um, I have a team of people I work with, very talented people. Um, but all of that sort of goes into the process. So when it comes to something like a, a really advanced instrument, um, it, it's basically half and half, half programming and half, uh, half sound editing. <clears throat> oh, and the, the language here, this is called KSP, Contact Script uh, Protocol or Contact Script Processor. I forget what the P stands for. But uh, yeah, it's actually not that complicated. This is a particularly complex instrument. Um, I could show you Super Audio Cart's code, it's way worse. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's very powerful. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. So I, can, I could talk about that for hours. That's basically, in a way, that's my day job, really. Um, I make music for fun now, and that's, that's like the day job. Which, uh, but it's okay, because I enjoy it. <clears throat> okay, so moving on with the track. Um, let's see. I think adding some... Maybe I should work on the drums more. I think I could actually do better with the arpeggios too. So let me try uh, rewriting that a little bit more, a little bit better, better slash more. I didn't want it to be quite as fast. It wasn't flowing very well with the melody, so. Might change the synth here, so keep that in mind. synth more for sure and uh, <clears throat> go from there oh okay so yeah um, more about the shakuhachi since people seem interested in that why don't I whoops <laughs> minimize that feeling why don't I pull it up you can it sounds like um, why not so this is an instrument that I've been working on <clears throat> I say we or I've been working on but really it's a team effort right so this is this is just one thing 
and uh, let's see, gotta make sure I'm playing in the right octave. That's enabled. Why is that not working? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna play this for a minute. You could see uh, <laughs> this is just uh, what I'm doing. Okay, so this was something that uh, our project manager uh, came up with. He said, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we did this, this series of wind instruments? So this is sort of the it's the, this is in beta right now, so it's not done. But the idea is that you can play all sorts of different articulations from the uh, that were, that we recorded. So there's a whole list of articulations, trills, and different sustains, and grace notes, and legatos, and all that cool stuff. And uh, or you can have this. You can just turn up this knob that basically says "play cool stuff" when I hit a note. stuff. So it's the overblown. There's two vibrato modes, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so I mean that's the the basic gist of it. And there's different sorts of releases for each uh, for each note, which is cool. So there's uh, you can just stop the note, which sort of just cuts the breath. Um, it can bend down like that, or it can sort of just breathily fade away like that. So anyway, yeah, so it's, it's still in beta, you know, this stuff is going to go away, um, there's an effects rack built in with it, blah, blah, blah. So uh, yeah, so that's, that's the project that I'm working on during the day, so to speak. Um, and with any luck, this will do well, and then we can do lots of other cool solo wind instruments that are really playable, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. So, But that is not for this project. I will, I will delete that for now. But if you're interested, you can check out... Oops. You can check out Impact Soundworks on Twitter or Facebook. That's the company that I own that produces instruments like that. <clears throat> uh, okay, cool. Anyway, so. This is coming along. Um, play with this sound more. Maybe having it be uh, like a glide. Okay, not that, no. <laughs> no, what, actually what's happening there is I have it on Legato, it should be on Retrigger. Check this out in isolation. Something's happening here. Uh, oh, okay, so. I was being modulated by something else. I think I want it to be kind of moving like that, just very slow. Let's 
see what that sounds like in context. that pad and I actually think that pad can work really well here from the intro check it out like this <laughs> That's cool. I think that sounded good. That's that's closer to what I want. But there's no percussion yet. There's no impact uh, or rhythm to it yet. So that's that's going to come next. Um, uh, welcome, the new gaming. Welcome from France. That's cool. Wow, a lot of people, uh, a lot of inter international folks um, here today, which is cool. Again, thank you for uh, for joining me. It's very nice of you to drop in and watch me. So I've been working on this breakdown section for this track. Okay, there's a question about Air Expand 2, which is, okay, so check this out. This, uh, as of right, this video being recorded slash this stream, it's July 30th, 2016. Um, I believe this is free for like one more day, maybe. It's a very, very neat um, tool. <clears throat> it's basically a free bank of sounds. And what I was saying when I, I posted about it actually on Facebook, um, this is, to me, sounds about as good as your typical like one thousand dollar keyboard. So if you bought, if you went out and bought like a Yamaha Roland Korg keyboard that costs about a thousand dollars, it probably be, it's about as good as this. That that's my honest opinion. So the, the, the fact that you can get this pretty much for free is like absolutely stunning. I, I can't I can't believe that they uh, that they're pretty much just giving it away. Um, Everything loads really fast. It sounds good. Um, actually, although oddly enough, there's no sound coming out of it. Don't know why that's oh, that's happening. That's interesting. What's going on? What's going on, buddy? I suspect it's probably something. The one downside of this <laughs> piece of software, it was working fine yesterday, but. Uh, it's based on a uh, certain kind of DRM copy protection, and I've been kind of messing with my computer lately. Sometimes when you switch USB ports, for example, it messes up the copy uh, copy protection. So don't know why it's not working for me right now. It would be cool if it were working, but it isn't, so I guess I'm just going to delete it for now from this project, which is kind of funny. Um, that really is the only downside, but, I mean, for free, can you really complain? In my opinion, no, but... Oh well. Uh, you do not need to worry about speaking English if you don't want. Of course, I will not be able to understand you unless you speak English, so uh, do keep that in mind. So I'm going to try making like a kind of acid-like synth that I can work into the track. So I gotta get the filter just right, and then...
It's actually surprising how good serum sounds for this sort of thing. Now, uh, I probably need to make a video about this at some point. But how much I like this instrument. I mean, it's just so good. I love Serum. Um, I, I was thinking about doing a kind of a review, uh, review plus tutorial series on it. Um, uh, triple I or quadruple I hugs. What's up? Thanks for coming in. That's cool. Thank you for joining me. So uh, just real quick, yeah, Serum, you might notice I'm using it a lot. It's just super powerful. It's one of the most powerful synths that I've ever used. Uh, it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually, in my opinion, it's, it's very well thought out. It was thought out, I think, from the perspective of somebody that designs a lot of synthesizer sounds, not necessarily uh, from the perspective of a programmer, but somebody um, that says, well, you know, what if you could modulate every single knob just by clicking and dragging like that? Like, boom, it's modulated. Um, it's a brilliant in terms of the user interface. It's got an, a fantastic rack of effects. Uh, you can see the distortion sounds pretty good. It has a uh, dimension, which is like, uh, it kind of adds reverb and stereo very easily. Uh, it's, you can stack oscillators. Just with a click, I mean, really, it just goes on and on. I could talk about it all day. Um, I have all sorts of expanded waveforms for it. Many of these you can download for free, imported from all sorts of different instruments, and uh, there's really no limit to uh, to what you can do. The, the one thing I would say is that it's not the most analog sounding, uh, despite what I said about the filters. Um, yeah, the, despite it sounding good for this kind of three or three acid type stuff. But um, that being said. That's not really why you would use it anyway. It, it, it's got it, crazy sort of digital capabilities for all sorts of modulation and things. So um, I highly recommend it. It's probably my number one synthesizer right now. This is a layer underneath, underneath all that stuff. A little bit of copying and pasting action. Of course, that's going to sound pretty static unless we mess with the. Uh, so, mod to amount. What we want to do is macro one. This is basically the cutoff. Take that, make it a controller. Okay, so that, that layer is sounding pretty good. Um, okay, so some more, <clears throat> some more questions, uh, or not questions, but just talk about music tech plugins, which, uh, again, I can't get enough of this stuff. Uh, 
point about Super Audio Cart, which is the um, 8 and 16 bit uh, virtual instrument that we made, uh, I, I would call it, you could call it a rompler in the sense that it is based on samples. So if I, let me, let me pull it up here. So this is this is Super Audio Cart. And this is based on some SNES samples, that sort of glittery sound. Uh, and so is, let's see if I can find it. The drum kit from before, if I can find. I'm really bad at labeling my stuff, I apologize. Um, why is the sound muted? Probably because there's some automation, that's why. Maybe? I think I hit something on my MIDI controller and it's like not sending. That, you know what, that must be it. I think I hit a control on my MIDI controller and now it's it's not sending to multiple channels. I'm I'm pretty sure I, I did that. I don't know how I did that, but I did. Um, in fact, I should turn it off and turn it back on. But yeah, so Super Audio Cart, yeah, it's a rompler in the sense that it's based on samples, but it has a lot of synthesis features. It has LFOs, it has an arpeggiator, it has um, uh, this huge modulation matrix. You can modulate pretty much any control with anything else. So it's a lot more deep in terms of the editing than your typical um, rompler, and you have a lot of control over the waveforms and the oscillator, so that's cool. Uh, and if I could decide between Serum, Massive Zebra, or Synthmaster, I don't really like Synthmaster for the UI. I really like Serum. It would be a very tough call between Serum and Zebra, but I think I would go to Serum because I, I just like it a little bit more. I think it's a little bit more powerful. Um, so if you just came in, let, let's check out kind of where we're at right now with the track. Get play it through. not finished. The total time spent on this so far, by the way, is uh, 5 hours 36 minutes. So um, overall, pretty good, pretty good progress. Um, and a lot of the detail work comes later. I'm trying to pull away from, from doing a lot of that live because I think it's not as 
interesting to watch me look for a snare sound for 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I was going to add some more stuff here. Uh, actually, I was going to do a couple things. I was going to try a I was gonna try a good old 909 hi hat. See how that kind of sounds for the off beats. <laughs> Too. Um, and maybe some of this would actually come in before. Also, what's up, Sutson? Let's see. Assuming yeah, I'm just kind of pronouncing things uh, the way I think they're supposed to be pronounced. This sounds good. Let's go with this. I'm going to do this as a uh, two part pattern. Yeah, what is going on with my MIDI? I good. Um, uh, the piano. Piano is, yeah, it's Pearl Concert Grand, which is another instrument I did. And it sounds pretty good. Um, how would I classify this track? Progressive? Yeah, I guess progressive breaks. Sure, why not? Um, what I, what I said last time, last week, which, by the way, I'm going to post the, all of my streams on YouTube. Um, I d forgot to do it this last week. Uh, what I was saying before was that I'm trying to avoid really, like, pigeonholing myself, I guess, into one style because, uh, I mean, for this work that I'm doing now, because uh, I think it, it can be a little limiting. I just kind of want to make music for fun. And, you know, even if breakbeat isn't like the very most modern genre necessarily, I think, you know, with the right production, writing, it, it can be something that's really emotional and enjoyable, um, even if it's not like trap or, or whatever, future bass. Um, so I'm just kind of like writing music for fun and I'll classify it later. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> the lightest ram that Pearl could take. Uh, well, it depends on what kind of patch you load. The very lightest would be... So with one mic position loaded... That's interesting. Okay, it's not unloading stuff. I don't... Something, okay, something is not right here. <laughs> Probably because I, I'm doing this in a DAW and there's another instance loaded. You can get it down to about 250 megabytes for the lightest uh, version of it. 
Um, depend it also depends on how many mic positions you use, so that's something to keep in mind. Did FL just crash? Maybe. No, hey, it didn't crash. Yay. Oh, wow. I'm using the latest version of FL 12 right now, uh, which 12.3 build 71. So they supposedly fixed some issues with contact. Uh, you might recall I was having a lot of issues with that. So far, so good. I don't want to jinx it, but it's, it's pretty good right now. <clears throat> okay, so this this is sounding good. <music>
We get a little intense with the sequencing. That's how, uh, that's how you got to roll for the more interesting stuff. Thank you, Jill. She's, uh, she's here. because there's a delay. Oh. There you are, see? Uh, okay. <laughs> hi guys! I'm in my painting clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the light. Yeah, oh, we'll get her on this track for sure. One thing I want to do here is actually, um, I need to set this to be velocity sensitive. It's going to enable me to do some more uh, intricate sequencing for this. Let's check this out. Everybody says hi, by the way. <laughs> Some cool glitch stuff going. Might be able to see her outside in the reflection, maybe. different effects, some uh, glitch effects. I want to get those in there. Let's do that up next. Stutter edit. Okay, check the chat real quick. Um, uh, very punchy drum line. Yeah, the 8-bit stuff is, uh, it's a drum kit in Super Audio Cart um, using NES uh, samples. So we got that, we got some noise happening, and then I'm not actually slicing it up, I'm just manually sequencing the samples. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, right now, yeah, I'm using, I do have Glitch 1, Deep Blue Glitch 1. I don't have Glitch 2 yet, although I do kind of want it. Uh, so right, right now I'm just using Isotope. So for this. <laughs> Uh, 
We're going to experiment with a few different effects here. something like that. We'll play with it a little bit more as well, but uh, it's, again, it's a pretty good start. And this is volume automation for it so that we can kind of hear what's going on. messed up something with the sequencing here. Cool. Okay, so that, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, with, the, with the glitch effects in there as well. Um, sounds pretty good. So... Uh, what to do next? here with some different patterns happening. Something with like real drums here, and uh, yeah.
try that. So um, yeah, something like this, uh, maybe bring it out more uh, later and in improve some of the drum sequencing and mixing. some sort of sweep into that as well. Let's check that out for a sweep. Okay, so some more to do there, but I think that's um, I think that's pretty good. Also, cat. Yeah, there's a cat down there. Let's keep the cat. Moo moo. Okay. Uh... So I think what we would do is something like this. fullness from the EQ that I had mixed down at the beginning. direction I think I want to go with it is have this big uh this big breakdown here. Something like this, and what I'll do is sort of automate it down so it's not as uh, grating over this 
portion of the track. Something like that, maybe I'll pitch it down a little bit actually, like that. We'll do generic, okay. What I think could sound cool is like a really deep uh, pluck of some kind. So let me pull up Omnisphere because it has some excellent, excellent instruments for this type of thing. It's channel zero, channel zero, okay. Let's see if I can find something that works really well for this. Hey Joe Chip, what's up? Thanks for joining. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be using this exact thing. Probably not, but it's a starting point. Something I actually think like a maybe more like a mallet could work. Let's see, I think I know the kind of instrument I'm looking for. Like a hang drum could work. Let's try that out. bad because of the latency. That's my that's my excuse.
gonna try a few different variations of this here. fit for this kind of thing as well. Also, it's starting to rain. Okay. Hopefully that won't be a problem because uh, it does get very loud in here. Okay. Where did I put this? Contact libraries? Show drum? Here we go. Okay. in there, some arpeggios. That sounds in context. Hey, Lisa, hey, what's up? Thanks for dropping by.
So something like this, I feel like sounds pretty good and it'll help build things back up, you know? something here with the 3 out 3 synth from earlier. Okay, see how that sounds. Bring this in here. Keep the rhythm going. Uh, that motion is a little extreme, so I'm going to cut it back a little bit and try it like this. A little lower. puffed up because of the thunder. <laughs> uh oh, I got that surge protector though. Let me take a look at the, uh, the decay. Pretty sweet. Okay, so that's uh, sounding pretty good for the breakdown. Um, good, uh, good action happening. Got all these beautiful pads. Got the fall. Thanks for the bit, Tommy Fox. Later. Oh, that, uh, that sweep from earlier, I mixed it out. So that should be more like this.
Uh, here comes the rain. I'm gonna be wrapping up shortly anyway. Well, this is probably as good a time as I need to stop, because it's about to get real loud real quick. Because uh, I am in a literal greenhouse. <laughs> so. cool. I, I'm feeling pretty happy about where we're at. Again, this is now at this point maybe six-ish hours of work. Yeah, six hours, 18 minutes. This is pretty good. Some detail work to be done. Um, let's check it out from the top. Turn my mic off for a second.
Okay, I'm unmuting my mic for a second. As you can hear, the rain is now pouring and may in fact be louder than me. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna get this up on YouTube. A lot of fun, thank you for coming. Uh, definitely gonna stream again next, oh my God, next Saturday. And uh, maybe during the week too. Okay, so this has been Zircon. Thank you for watching me make some music. It was fun. And uh, I will see you next time. And uh, stay dry if you're in the mid-Atlantic. <laughs> okay, later guys.